guys, Kelly again from Kells Aquariums. A uh, quick look at my tank. I say it's not the main reason we're here today. I want to look at the engine room more than the actual tank. I've added a couple of bits and bobs. All I've done in the tank, if you look over here you'll see a bit of green. I finally got around to taking the plantlets off the Java fern and I've tied them to the bits of wood at this end which didn't have any on. So sort of where we're looking now, some just bits, they're real small, they're just tie wrapped on. See as they grow, they will uh, you won't be able to see the tie wraps, so they'll sort of grow over them. So yeah, just having a look. So no major's happened <laughs> other than a bit of engine room action. So yeah, there's all the langers doing their thing on the second down. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm still happy with the way everything's going. Got that little car who really wants to go on the queue, but the the, the algae is on it. <laughs> oh, oh, is it going to get a piece? He's got a piece. He's had a go. Look at that big fat whale on it, though. <laughs> You know, the little ones do get a go on everything. So they're one of my favourite fish is a Otto Sinkless. Just grafters. I've still got a load of them in this tank. But yeah, oh, that's a bit of a... <laughs> Who knew I'd be an Odessa about in the way. Anyway, I'm going to sort of leave this here. <laughs> and we're going to go and have a look at the other side. So... Busy. So yes, the, all the fish are getting on fine. Me um, leopard frogs fine. My shrimps don't seem to come out much in the day these days. But on a night last night, I was down here feeding because I'd, I'd forgot. <laughs> and um, yeah, just putting stuff in for my catfish, and there was shrimp everywhere on a night. So it looks like they do the night work now because there's dickheads all over the tank. Look at all these probably bothering them. <laughs> but yeah, right, we're off to the side. Right, so, look at the other side, I just thought I'd have another quick look at him, because that fat head's out. And, uh, as normal. Swan! They're all diddling about. So, but yeah, as I say, it's not what we're here for. <laughs> Gonna go down, ooh. So, we're back in the engine room. As you can see, there's a bit of a moving bed moving. I've, uh, Change some stuff in there. I'm only using two of the air pumps. I've uh, what I've done is I've put some big air stones in. So you can maybe see one on the uh, what I'm corner here, and it's making them move still quite well. I'm still getting a good bit of movement. I've put two like long tube ones in, which are flexible, and two just big blue air stones. I was finding that the others I had in, I had six of uh, these small blue ones in. And they was moving the water amazingly, but God, the, the actual air stones itself was noisy. Really, really noisy. So, I've took them out. But, I have added, this is what we're actually here for. If we can see. I've added two um, temperature controllers. So, what they are, they're ink beds. There's two different types there because I ordered the wrong one. <laughs> but it's worked out right at the same time. Because I've got three eaters and what there is, attached to each one of them, there is a double socket what comes off the bottom. I'll show you a bit more close up in a sec. So you get two sockets coming off the bottom so I can plug two eaters into the blue one. So the blue one is just a heating controller. It's got two sockets so you can put two eaters in you give it a temp, which you can see hopefully is, I'm trying to keep it at 26 degrees, and it's at 25.9 degrees. So, and you can like adjust your variables. So you can say, well, I want you to switch it on and off within like 0.1 of a degree, or within 10 degrees, or it all depends what your preferences are. Now the green one next to it, the issue of, the, the, that was the first one I bought, and it was an, I bought the wrong one, because that's a, a heater and a cooler. 
which might work for me in summer if it gets too hot in here I can put a big fan unit up and that'll turn it on and off when you know when the temperature right again as you can see it's set to 26 degrees and it's a 25.8 that one says it'll flip between they're, they're literally like 0.1 out of each other which is awesome um, and then there's three leads coming off the bottom so one's the power one's a plug one's a, a socket like a two-way socket and then there is a heat uh, a temperature probe which I will show again show you in a sec because the sump I've got with it being a marine one it's got actual probe holders which is such a bonus but yeah instead of like your your heaters getting jammed on that will turn them off so as soon as it's its temperature so like the the green one is still heating because I say it's just it's just banded it up to uh, 25.9 but the other one isn't the other one's turned off I've got them set slightly different because I was playing you know what I mean so I'm gonna set them the same in the end so yeah basically that will stop your heaters ever jamming on because if your heater jams on and the temperature gets high that will switch the socket off that it is into and the cheap these ones I mean some of these heater things like hundreds of pounds I mean these are 30 quid I think 29 quid these are so you know it's all good it's a good it's just a bit of insurance against your heater breaking in the wrong way which is breaking on and heating your, your stuff up so if that goes wrong the actual ink bed you, what you've got to think if that somehow went wrong you've still got the thermometer the, the thermostat in your heater so that would turn itself off even though the plug socket was on so you've got like a bit of double redundancy and that's pretty good as it is and it's a, a sweet thermometer as well but I need two because I'm running I, I could just run two 300 watt eaters but I've got three 200s again just my preference so yeah I've been running them and as I say I am um, don't worry about the wiry mess there that was because of this lighting rig I've been going through the lighting misery but as you can maybe see which moving along I say there is three air pumps there three are EM 400s and now the well, of course it's the middle one I'm not using, <laughs> just to make it weird. Like if it was the bottom one, I could just remove it real easy, but it's the middle one, so it's in the way. So I'll probably be adjusting that around when I get um, my next lighting stuff sent, because I have ordered new lights. You'll be seeing them soon. I've also ordered some new filters and stuff for my tanks upstairs, just to do some tests. Just because I'm, you know, I'm really not impressed with the Oasi. Is it bio or whatever the internal one with the bypass which I've talked about in other videos and I've talked about it other people have got videos of modding them I've modded man still think it's garbage so <laughs> I've ordered something else but yeah so that's the engine room all just running away so now I'm gonna get a bit closer we'll have a bit of a look at the settings in these ink bed things and I'll show you the probes Ooh, everyone likes being probed just before I move to the probes, the lighting's a bit bad, don't worry, but look, because I'm here, all these 30 Odessas are just right at the front of the tank where I'm about to go. Ugh, tedious fish. Forever hungry. <laughs> okay, so I've just removed the lid. Again, now it's in real neat because I've only just banged them in. But there's two probes down there, as you can see, like the metal probes. And I've got them going down these probe holders so it holds the wires in place and maybe put a sucker on them and sort them out. Um, I saw my bubble traps grafting away because the water, the, the only thing was that I have variable pump speeds on so at different times of the day the pump's running at different um, levels. So that water level moves, it never goes below here but it does raise sort of up and down as it gets choppy in the tank. I've got loads of stuff so. Um, one of these bags of media is probably going in that there, my quarantine tank. Or one of them bags of media, I don't know. But that's all working well. Um, as you can see, that's running less than normal. Well, less than the last maybe time I showed a video. There's a bit of build up there. I'm still to tweak it all, but enough's moving that that moving bed is still a very good source of filtration, especially when you add the like probably 15 kilos of bite or media or whatever I've got in. So anyway, these ink beds. 
here we go so off the bottom of them I've pulled it out a little bit so I don't have to mess about but you can see hopefully this here which is like a double socket that's got two eaters plugged into it and that just sits behind there while I'm not doing it I'm not messing about but yeah that's what comes off it so you get to plug two eaters into the blue one because it's just an eating controller or if you're doing the other one you get an eater and a cooler so we're just gonna have a mess with this so here's your setting so you all set down for about three seconds I don't make that noise. So it says what what temperature do you want it to be? 26. Temperature variance. We'll give it let it turn off between a degree either way. Calibration if your thermometer's out. Uh, centigrade. So, sorry, Celsius or Fahrenheit. I don't know what TI means. <laughs> if it's right, you just hold it down. Again, boom, locked in. So yeah. That's um, pretty easy. The difference between them two is that one's got a cooling temperature and a cooling threshold as well, but that's the only difference. So, that's that. Thanks for watching. Look at them. Don't worry, my glasses are a bit dirty. There's all streaks and I ain't cleaned it this week. <sighs>